Hey everyone, Matt Saletti with DubSpot. I'm a course designer and director of our online school here, and I'm looking at some of the brand new products in Native Instruments Complete 10. Some great new synths in here. We're going to show you how they work and why you're going to want to use them. All right, let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is open up an instance of Complete Control. This is the software host that the Complete Control S-Series keyboards come with. And this is basically how you're going to browse through your entire huge complete library and then also uh, control them from all the pre-mapped smart native map controls right from the eight knobs. So without further ado, let's kind of get right in here and load up an instance of rounds. You can see the nice big browser, very easy to see. And we can just come in, we can dial up specific types, attributes, or we can just come right in and get right into the since by pressing the browse button. And the first thing you'll notice is that everything changes, lights up differently on the KKS keyboard. This is really nice because this is one of the first synths that is really tightly integrated with the new keyboard. Really nice feature here. So what is rounds? It's a analog digital hybrid synthesizer and it's capable of creating very interesting complex sequenced and morphed sounds and it's a little daunting to look at first about what's all happening here but really once you break it down it's quite easy to use and it's very very powerful so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of open this up a bit and I just isolated some nice snapshots that will kind of uh, show off what's actually happening here a little easier. As you can see, it kind of goes and does its own thing. turn on the arpeggiator and change the parameters of that Expressibility, and of course, Native Instruments is going to go ahead and sneak in some craft work on us. <laughs> I'm not going to hate. I can. Uh, I can't get enough craft work. So you can put it in every synth for all I care for. All right. So let's break it down. As I mentioned, it's an analog digital hybrid, meaning there are synthesis engines for both analog and digital synthesis. So first thing we're going to do is kind of break this down. I hit this little plus sign here to activate the main uh, page of the GUI. And number one right here, this is a synthesizer. <laughs> easy, easy enough, right? Now, simple subtractive two oscillator architecture. This is uh, very reminiscent of classic analog synths that do uh, sync, multiple, you know, cross modulation, pulse width. All sorts of good stuff here. So simple oscillator into a filter section that does FM. And you have LFO and envelope modulators, as well as delay reverb sends and an amplitude ADSR envelope. So very easy to kind of work with if you if you think about it. And one thing I always recommend is kind of putting a synthesizer into its init or initial state and this means to break it down 
to the most boring, basic, you know, starting point that you can get because this is really going to help you understand the synth. Now, Native Instruments actually supplies a preset called a knit, um, but I, I often suggest that you even just try to do it yourself because you'll gain a better appreciation of how the synth works. So if we wanted to start doing this, I can actually go ahead and start double clicking things, right? And we can change, let's just put these to sawtooth. And as I just kind of double click, things are gonna go to their default setting. Bipolar knobs will go right to the middle. You know, everything will kind of get reset to a boring blank starting point. You can even just turn these down if you want. And for the ADSR, I'm just gonna do um, quick attack, long sustain, no decay or release. So it's basically a gate on message. Now, now that I've reset this, how can I control it up here? And what is this? This is called the voice programmer. And the voice programmer has eight blocks, A through H. Each block contains four cells inside of it. So 32 cells that can be sequenced. And as you can see, there's little numbers that correspond. So as you guessed it, this corresponds to which synth is being triggered inside of each block. So we can actually go in and assign specific blocks to just only trigger one uh, synthesizer, if you will. N and I call these sounds. These are essentially synthesizers. So if I right click, I can actually isolate uh, block A. Still a lot is kind of happening here. Um, so we're going to go in. I'm just going to put it in this mode. This, these are the playback modes. You can do things where sequence uh, it runs through a sequence, it runs through a time length, or every single note will trigger a new cell. I still got my arc put on. And there we go. Now I'm kind of locked into this cell. And it's a standard kind of simple sound. There's a reverb on here somewhere, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Now, once you have it like that, the real trick here is to actually come in and right click on this sound. And now we can drag it to each of the individual synthesizers. And this way, we're just going to basically be resetting everything to this default state. Because you can imagine, if you want to sit down and start programming something and you start from a random preset, well, you're going to have very complex, very different you know, synthesizers that you're going to have to go in and, and worry about. So just start with something simple like a, uh, a sawtooth and don't, don't have to think twice about it. Now, if you want to actually reset the blocks, you can do the same thing where you right click, drag, and drop to where you need to go. So this is pretty helpful here. I'm going to do it like that. And you know what? I'm going to isolate B and switch it over to the digital side. Now the digital synthesizer is a three oscillator. You could call these three operators because this is FM synthesis. And it's a very simple parallel or serial design without having to worry about it too much. If you look at something like FM8, it contains six operators and you can get a very, uh, you know, wide range of digital sounds out of this thing. But what I like about rounds is that it's, it's very capable and yet much easier and more instant to actually program this uh, FM synth. And from here it runs into the filter. This has a nice digital lo-fi uh, downsampling right before the filter input. The same uh, LFO and envelope mods, etc. So you can come in here and start double clicking your heart's content and reset everything as well. I'm going to fake it and because uh, I've already set up my own init patch. And we can just kind of come in here like this, right click, copy, you get the idea, and kind of set up a nice initial patch for if I want to use, come on guy, if I want to use um, analog or FM, I can kind of choose between each one. So once you've set that up, you're almost there. The last thing to worry about is the control page. And these are the macro controls. So everything you can see here is going to be mapped out fairly easily. And these are the most essential parameters. So you're probably going to want to actually tweak these as well. One thing that's nice about this is that you can link all the macros to every single synth. So you don't have to worry about programming each one. So now when I adjust the macro, or more importantly, when I change it right here from the keyboard, it's going to affect everything. But if you want to be more complex, you can even hold down right click and kind of create different variations. 
or do something cool like even reverse some of these so the polarity is different depending on how you turn you can see it it can be uh, quite complex but for setting up your init patch you know just kind of keep it simple and figure that out the other thing you might want to do is actually change some of these macros for instance I might want the digital reverb delays to be triggered up here so I can maybe select here select my reverb out and you can even see the colors change and on the KKS I can actually see that is a digital one reverb not analog one reverb for instance which is this guy so again set all these parameters to default you know basically take care of everything so everything is the same get it nice squared away and then you can start programming so once we've done that I'm gonna come in and we would just actually go in and append and make a new snapshot which I've already done boring old saw wave but we're ready to program now so stay tuned for the next video and we're gonna get into some of the more particulars about this synth